In this episode, we wait out a strong weather warning in Monterey Bay, California, decide to do an impromptu haul out, and then continue south through some very foggy conditions, where we have a surprise encounter that is way too close. Well, we're still here in Monterey. Tonight they're calling for gusts up to 49 knots. So we're already kind of getting a bit of it here. It's about 10 o'clock in the morning and the skies are really moody. We've got 32 knots at our masthead so far. And yeah, it's really pretty out. It's really warm, but um, those are some strong winds. So we'll see what it's like out here in the Anchorage. We've got our good friends over here on Sunrisa. So we're gonna be, we're all gonna be kind of riding it out together, which is, is really nice. But we've had the Harbor Master come and check on us a couple times and just let us know that they've got lots of room in the marina if we want to tuck in. I think he thinks we're a little bit crazy just staying out here in the Anchorage, but hopefully we don't prove him right. <laughs> we'll see. Along with the high winds came a strong surf warning and we decided it would be the perfect opportunity to hike down to Point Pinos to see just what kind of swells were rolling in from the Pacific. I had also heard there was a monarch butterfly sanctuary nearby and was pretty excited to go and check that out too. Originally from Australia, eucalyptus trees were introduced to California in the 1850s to provide a renewable source of timber for construction. It was seen as a highly profitable income source, but it wasn't until millions were planted that people realized the wood wasn't good for construction until the trees were at least 75 years old. Suited for harsh environments, they are an aggressive species, toxic to native plants and animals, and their bark and leaves contain oily compounds that make them highly flammable. One upside to their presence, however, is that the monarch butterflies that overwinter in areas along the California coast seem to prefer these leafy giants. Not only do the eucalyptus provide the perfect shelter where the colonies can huddle together for warmth, but the trees also flower during the winter. This provides the monarchs with a very convenient food source. Well, it uh, looks like we're gonna do an impromptu haul out this morning. We need four long lines, two in the bow, two in the stern, and then one short spring in case we need to tie up the dock. Well, we are on the hard now and Conley's just getting paint stuff ready. Then he's yeah. gonna get his hazmat suit on <laughs> and his respirator and he's gonna start sanding. And then I'm gonna start taping the water line and get this baby ready to paint. Well, one last look at the dirty blue bottom. 
and we're gonna paint it black this time. So hopefully we can't see any of the soft growth that's gonna form when we get to warmer waters. It's already been growing quite a bit as we move our way south, but um, yeah, hopefully black's gonna be a bit better. Then if we dry out too, it might help to kind of kill any of the soft growth with the UV. So there are lots of barnacles on there, as you can see. Here we go. She is all painted up, all ready to go back in the water. After getting back in the water, we decided it was time to make a few more miles. We said goodbye to Monterey Bay and set sail for a fancy little place just around the corner called Stillwater Cove. With the leftover swell still rolling in, we soon found out the cove was not so still. But the stunning sunset was good consolation for the discomfort, and we somehow managed to get a decent sleep anyway. For many hours we rode along in the dense fog. With a nice wind at our back, we sailed along at seven knots. Right before dark, however, we had a close encounter that really shook us to our core. We do our very best to keep safe distances from any whales we encounter while we're sailing. However, this just goes to show that at any moment, especially when conditions reduce visibility, an encounter is possible and can catch us completely off guard. We are so thankful that these two full-size humpback whales put in a solid effort to avoid us as we silently sailed on through. It was an experience we'll never forget and reaffirmed the importance of always having someone keeping a close watch at the helm.
stopped in Morro Bay yesterday morning after pulling an all-nighter from um, Stillwater Cove and it was pretty foggy here yesterday but today there's some sunshine and we're just about to go out and do a bit of exploring. Morro Bay is a small city with a population just under 11,000 and is a well-known stopover for many boats transiting the western flank of the United States. Especially for those transiting north to south, it can be a good spot to hunker down and wait for bad weather to pass before continuing on around Point Conception. Just left Morro Bay, headed for Santa Catalina. Um, we've got about 180 or 190 miles. Yeah, hoping we get some wind. I'm just about to make some spaghetti for supper and see how the night goes. Just got our sails up. We've got about eight knots of wind, not much, but better than nothing. And it's very foggy, moister than an oyster out here. And we're doing four and a half knots. It's very, very quiet, peaceful. The wind filled in perfectly and we spent the next 24 hours averaging 6 knots. This made for a very fun, relaxing and cruisy passage. The fog had finally burned off and for the first time in a while there was no land in sight.
Coming up in the next episode, we make landfall on California's Santa Catalina Island, where we find an abundance of hiking trails and a unique assemblage of flora and fauna. Join us as we explore the island both above and below the surface.